Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. It's great to see you guys again. I feel like we just spoke not too long ago. And I gotta say thank you all for your overwhelmingly positive response for the ultimate Duramax giveaway, aka the Dream Duramax giveaway that I am hosting through Enthusiast Passion is the priority. My objective, ladies and gentlemen, is to give one of you guys that follow this channel your ability to win your dream truck. We got the LBZ sitting over here nice and comfortable, which is why she's over there, but she is not exiled by any means. If anything, she gets a lot of love because she gets driven actually more than these trucks right now due to the fact that, well, I'm only going to have it in my possession for a short term and it's an LBZ. If you guys want to get entered to win that truck, it's $20 for every one entry. The giveaway runs through the end of February. Do not miss out on your opportunity to get into this sweepstakes. Everybody says that it's never going to be me and everybody always doubts the statistics. A, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, so you'd never even be able to actually say that if you never got entered. And B, you guys gotta realize, like, I'm not speed hunters, I'm not speed society, I'm not 8080, I'm not the Diesel Brothers. I'm the Dirty Max Jack YouTube channel. It's not like you guys are competing with tens of thousands of entries. If anything, you're only competing with a few thousand, if that. I mean, I don't even know if it's gonna be that because the giveaway has only been live for a few days. But seriously, I am freaking stoked at how stoked you guys are to take that truck home. We got the full Whirly Fab dressing kit on there. We got the Fast 150, the Drop Stars, the 33s, the Tonneau cover, the leather interior, the color match, the new tow mirrors, the Unleashed Duramax tuning, the DSP5. I mean, literally the perfect daily driver in the sense that I'm actually gonna be upset when that thing's gone because I love to drive it that much. Now, while we're on the topic of daily drivers today's video is not about the duramax giveaway it's not about the loi it's about the lml video that you guys have been asking for for the longest time jack where's the lml jack are you giving away the lml jack why don't you drive the lml jack and miss the lml i see the comments all the time i read them all the time and trust me guys i feel the exact same way with most of those comments as well so what we're going to do is we're going to go out and find a nice location being that the weather is oh so vlog supportive and we're going to talk about what's honestly going Going on with this truck in my mind to give you guys some closure as to what it is that I'm considering doing here. Let's just say in the next six months. Kind of a nice day, but it still qualifies as a cold start. Sunglasses on for this one, boys. Usually in winter time, these things aren't really needed that much. All right, so we found our gorgeous vlogging location of the day. We have so much to talk about regarding my 2015 LML Duramax that you guys know me for. This is the truck that started it all when it comes to terms of social media. Flashback two and a half years, I had an Instagram that had like 10,000 followers. My OGs, I know you guys are out there. That Instagram grew as quickly as it did because I picked this truck up right here behind me in December 2014. It was one of the first 2015 white Duramaxes to ever really break social media. If you guys saw my L5P review with three Cal Sal and Doug's L5P, the tuned L5Ps, I can put that video up in this corner right here if you guys want to check it out. Kind of a similar concept, right? There was a lot of hype built around it and that's kind of how my initial quote unquote following started on social media. And that was really the end of the story. And then it's transpired so much if we fast forward to the, the point in time where these Duramaxes have have become so associated with me, the brand, and everything that I share with you guys at the end of the day, and that's the coolest thing. I'd say over the past like two months, I haven't really shown much of this truck with natural curiosity from you guys, thinking like, oh, Jack hates that Duramax. Well, no guys, that's not the case at all. But yes, in a way, in a somewhat kind of indirect capacity, there are things that I've been thinking about in relation to this truck due to the fact that I haven't really been doing many things with it. So I know I have a few new followers from the last time that I did a quick overview of this truck and it does naturally spark a lot of interest being that it is very new. It looks great in my personal opinion and there are a slew of modifications with it. So at a high level guys, it's a Stealth 64 Turbo. It's got a CP3 conversion. It's full Whirly Custom Fab piping as you saw underneath. That's a frost orange color. It's kind of like a matte finish. It's really rad. I'm absolutely in love with it. It's got from a visual aesthetics purpose. Hello, Jack speaking. 
Sorry about that, guys. That was Exergy Performance. If you're not familiar with them, that's actually the CP3 that I have on this truck. And I just ordered some injectors from them, and I have their 10 mil pump. And we'll be talking about something that is in relation to Exergy and this truck here, at least to what I'm thinking here in a few minutes. I have the paint matched L5P hood on the front. The whole front end has been paint matched. That was not that way from the factory. That is all paint to match. Deleted all the chrome off that crap. No chrome here. 22 by 14 tracks SS8s. They're a negative 73 offset. Wrapped in a Nitto trail wrapper that's a 350. 5540, essentially like a 33 by 14. It's on a four to six inch Cognito NTBD lift, which is the no torsion bar drop lift. I've run that lift kit on my truck for like 40,000 miles and no joke, it's the best thing that I've ever done. I love that lift kit beyond belief. These are its third set of wheels and tires. I had a set of 20 by 12s, then 22 by 12s. Now these are 22 by 14s. Love the 22 by 14s. I don't think I'll ever go to a narrower wheel, especially on a wide body truck like this. That angle that you guys just saw is probably Probably my favorite angle of this truck which also is kind of the reason why that it's the thumbnail on the back we have the paint match bumper the worldly custom fab track bars a nightmare 544 train horn kit with a five gallon tank four train horns and a small compressor that thing is really freaking loud and scares the crap out of not only other people but me all the time and I honestly can't remember everything else that's done to it there's definitely way more it's just offhand I'm trying to kind of run through this stuff as quick as possible with you guys and I might be missing out on a few details but the truck in in and of itself is a 2015 LML Silverado Duramax 2500 HD LTZ. So it is completely fully loaded on the interior. It's got the Coco Dune interior. That was uh, an option that I'm really happy that I actually ended up going with because everybody seems to have black and I just kind of wanted to change it up for this specific instance. So let's get to the reason as to why I haven't been making videos with this truck. So lately I have not been acknowledging this truck, if you will, because, well, I was gearing up for the LBZ giveaway, which is now live. First link in the description below if you guys want to get entered to win that truck. And I have the Minimax. The Minimax has been absorbing a ton of my capacity due to the fact that that thing is a way more in-depth build that I am heading on myself. I'm not a mechanic, I'm not certified, and I'm trying to teach myself as I go and film that content for you guys. Plus, on top of that, I have my day job and I really need to kind of balance all of these things accordingly. So it's been kind of nice that I haven't had to really do much to this truck because I've gotten it to the point at which I'm just absolutely in love with the setup. And speaking of contentment, that's really not motivated me to do anything with this truck. With the Stell 64, it pulls perfectly. I had an S369 in the truck. I decided to remove that because I kind of wanted to make this more of like a tow rig, and it has been a very well-suited vehicle for that specific purpose. So I decided to switch to the Stell 64, which was a phenomenal transition because that turbo not only sounds amazing, it drives amazing, its responsiveness is amazing, and everything across the board is just absolutely phenomenal. So once I added that turbo, which was the second turbo to this truck, it was kind of like, I locked the lock and threw away the key in terms of doing what I wanted to do to this truck because it's perfect. It's perfect in every single retrospect. It's not over the top. It's not janky. It's clean. It's simple. It's minimalistic. It pretty much complements exactly how I love to build my trucks. And from a styling perspective, you know, I got my American Forces. It was the first set I had ever bought, and that was a huge accomplishment for me. I put those wheels on quite literally like four months after I started my YouTube channel. So that would be about a year and a half's time now, and that's the longest time that I've ever had a set of wheels in my possession. So a lot of you guys were speculating that this was going to be the giveaway truck, and I can see why. The fact that I didn't acknowledge it for so long, the fact that I haven't posted videos about it, the fact that I'm not even really sharing it on Instagram, the fact that I don't really talk about it, all of that would lead you to believe that I was going to be giving it away. But to be honest with you, I couldn't do that. I just love this truck way too much. It honestly shares a lot of sentimental value with me because it's really what kind of started it all. Phase one of this two-part conversation is what's going to be happening in the next, let's just say six months with this truck. I have a new turbo for it. I'm probably going to upgrade the injection pump. I don't know if I'm gonna build the trans. I don't really know if I wanna go down that route. Logan's been bothering me to build it. I have considered it, but I've also talked myself out of that really quickly because, well, it's on 14 wides. It's got huge tires on it and it's lifted. I mean, I can't really build a race truck out of that. Though, I know that these LMLs are extremely capable. This motor is good up to about 750 horsepower and I believe the injectors could handle just about that, 700 to 750 horsepower. So if I upgraded the pump and I upgraded the turbo, we could easily get there, but then my trans 
transmission would be screaming and we'd have to probably have a conversation about that as well. Now, I'm not saying that I'm dissing the idea of a built trans, but I don't really know if I wanna go to that level of caliber with this truck. But we will be doing a new turbo setup on this thing here probably sometime in the February timeframe. I actually have the turbo sitting in my garage right now. It's just back to that theme of time and capacity. We will be doing a new CP3 pump probably. I'm, I'm like 85% sure that we're gonna end up doing that. There's not too much that could dissuade me. There may be a few things, but nothing in the immediate scope that's gonna distract us from that intent. Now, a lot of you guys have wanted me to do like lighting upgrades, and I've already been in touch with Giovanni. He's basically waiting at my beck and call to send them out. I don't really know what I'd wanna do. If this was a Denali, then it'd be easy to say, all right, I wanna upgrade to the 1500 style Sierra headlights and taillights, and all will look great. It'll look phenomenal. Whereas on the Chevys, it's not like I really have the daytime running light ability. So what do I do? Do I just paint the ambers? Do I clear the ambers? I'm not really quite sure. I don't want it to be tacky. I don't want it to be janky. And that's not a diss to Geo. That's just me saying that the styling perspective on these trucks isn't really all that capable from a lighting perspective. Now on the back end, I do want to do something with the taillights. My ideal scenario would actually be to pick up some 1500 Silverado high country taillights. Those are the LED ones that kind of go up and go down. Retrofit them to this and then send them out to Geo so he can build them as I think that that would look absolutely amazing. I would like to do some switchbacks from a running light and a turn signal perspective. That would be cool. I'm treading extremely lightly because anything that's not executed flawlessly looks like shit in my opinion. I've considered tossing some airbags on the back because I have the onboard air. I have the functionality to inflate and well, deflate is simple, but I have the ability to inflate them at a manual flick of a switch, which is really, really nice. So I've considered that as well with just basically running the same wheels and tires. But I think that as a theme to all those ideas that I just talked with you guys, I need a new set of wheels on this truck. I need to do something different because it's just not doing it for me really anymore. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to sound spoiled. I freaking love these wheels more than anything. I think this truck is set up so perfectly. It's flawless, but I'd really love to just throw a new set of wheels on it to at least add a little bit of new spice to the recipe. Because as I sit here and look at it, I'm like, oh my God, it's perfect. But then at the same time, it's like, well, I kind of want to do something just to keep it alive. Only time will tell. I kind of wanted to just use this video as a forum to talk to you guys about some of the ideas as I know that you're extremely eager to know what the hell is going on with this truck here behind me. Now, let's go into part two of this conversation. You probably heard me talking recently about the 2020 Duramax, whether it's the Silverado or the Sierra, let's just clump them together right now. I do intend on getting one of those new trucks. I don't know if I'm gonna go with the Silverado version. I don't know if I'm gonna go with like the Sierra Denali version. If you guys wanna know right now, I'm kind of leaning towards Towards the Denali, it's just, they just keep that between you and me. But I absolutely know for a fact that that is on my to-do list. So you guys just heard about my short-term objectives with this truck. Come the June or July timeframe, the RPO codes are probably going to be opening up for the pre-orders and I definitely wanna get my name on that list. So will it be easy for me to sell this truck when that time comes? And am I going to second guess it? Probably. It's not gonna be easy for me to let go of the truck that allowed me to kind of build what I've built up until this point in time because we've had so many amazing monumentous times together. Now, of course, I'm talking to you guys about an inanimate object that doesn't give two shits about me, but I give three shits about it. I've probably only had three people in my back seat ever. The truck is absolutely immaculate. And honestly, when it comes to the point of selling it, I'm probably gonna be picky about the person that I sell it to. So I know that this was a lot of talking in this video. I think it was appropriate for the discussion that this truck deserves. I'm super freaking excited to be where I am today and to be able to even have these discussions with you guys about what my objectives are for 2019 to bring you the highest quality Duramax content that I possibly can with my capacity to be honest with you guys. So I, I just threw a lot at you guys about just some potential changes that could be happening in 2019. So and if anything now you have a lot to think about ponder for a few minutes and then type a few things on your keyboard and drop a comment below about what it is that you guys would like to see and what you're thinking. And at this point, guys, this vlog is effectively over. I am going to end at this angle right here because my, oh my, does that thing just look so absolutely beautiful from this angle. My Like League, I love you guys. Do what you do best, smash that thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. You won't regret it. I'll see you guys in the next upload.